Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on uh, where you have uh, joined us in the world today. My name is uh, David Morris. I'm VP here at uh, Falcon Store. And with me for uh, this webinar is Abdul Hashmi. Uh, and today we're talking about uh, migrate our migration program for the end of life of IBM's Protect Your Customers and how we can help one support that in the short term and longer term solutions as we move forward. Um, so we'll give you a really quick overview of Falcon Store for those of us, uh, those that you uh, haven't heard of us, uh, but most of you, I believe, had. We've been in the market for a uh, little over 20 years now uh, and have uh, integrated with uh, a number of different uh, storage systems, being that uh, backup and archive capability. Uh, the, we primarily focused on uh, you know, dedupe and high performance archive storage. We have over 38 uh, patents with eight new patents pending. And we'll talk about some of that new technology at the end of the presentation. You know, 800 plus customers worldwide in over 50 countries. And our product lines delineate between long term archive data retention and reinstatement, as well as business continuity, driven, you know, data driven replication and recovery. As we've seen over the uh, last few years, especially with the impact of COVID, we've seen a reinsurgence in our virtual tape engine. And we've, uh, over the last few years, got over 1.5 exabytes under management with that tr our traditional technology. And one of the things that our customers like most about Falcon Store is we have an agnostic approach to our architecture as well as a homogeneous paradigm where we want to work with all other uh, systems and it gives the vendors and customers a very seamless way to integrate their data into the, their existing architectures seamlessly uh, to provide support for that uh, long-term retention of data. When we break our uh, two products up very quickly on the operational side, what I consider the active data side, and we have two main products that fall under our store guard brand and this is really maintaining our continuous availability of those critical business systems you know that, that uh, you know that you need really high availability uh, from a recovery point standpoint and a recovery time objectives to maintain that business those business operations and then on the archive side we have our long-term vtl product which is virtual tape libraries which we uh, brought to market uh, 20 years ago, and now the new products, uh, StoreSafe, that really extends that into uh, into the cloud and into the future. And we'll be talking about that here soon. Um, when we look at the differences between the StoreSafe and your traditional VTL, I know a lot of people feel very comfortable with this product. It's been proven in market uh, for an extended amount of time. And one of the things, since we don't sell hardware, uh, you know, we have the, one of the best um, data deduplications engines in the business because we're not here to sell tape. We're here to save your data and reduce it down to the least amount of footprint we can make to reduce that cost for you. But as we've seen the scalability impact of the world now today, when you export a BTL, you have to do it in a raw format, and that actually has to be expanded back out and takes up the original amount of raw space. As we've switched to our new technology in Falcon Store that launched in March 17th, which was probably the worst day to launch a product in the last decade, um, we did get a lot of acclaim and a, a huge amount of coverage considering everything that was going on. And this takes a data-centric approach to storage versus your traditional system-centric approach. And we'll highlight that as we go forward through some of the technology. But we've really been able now to take your data, deduplicate it, put it in a container, and now that container can be exported fully deduped into any S3 storage or object storage on premise or in another data center. So it really changes the paradigm of why and how uh, you can store data for an extensively long time. And we'll talk about that a little bit as we go forward. One of the reasons we focused on the long-term storage is historically being in storage, most of us have been, a lot of the uh, uh, honest and a lot of the, the 
new investment has become, you know, been in that active data transactional processing uh, bucket over on the left. But as we move forward uh, in time, we've seen this actually shift pretty aggressively. So now we're looking at net net new gross cycles in storage. And there's a lot of, lot of um, investment still in the active and the warm data, that backup uh, segment in the market. But as we go forward, we've seen a huge investment and in a number of different drivers that are driving the retention market, not for you know one, five, 10 years, but the, um, the timelines are extending into the 25, 50 and 100 year timeline, which begs the question, how do we store data for 100 plus years and be able to maintain its coherency, its integrity? Um, and that's one of the questions we started asking as Falcon Store, looking at this as our kind of core market. Why is this happening and how can we solve this problem? Well, as you guys know, a lot of these uh, old market growth drivers have, have traditionally been a lot of papers and then migrated into more of the digital, um, digital paradigm um, over time. Uh, oil and gas, you know, those guys keep their data forever because they may be, not be able to do a shot uh, in the same place because of, a, you know, um, houses are being built, things like that, or war zones and things. But the other markets that we're starting to see because of, say, e-discovery investigations, that information is having to be kept longer and longer time frames, as well as pharmaceutical and uh, health data. And as we look across these new regulations like GDPR um, and others across the, the nations, um, we're seeing more and more data is falling under this compliance, regulatory, e-discovery, and privacy acts. And those terms of storing that information from an evidentiary standpoint, while you maintain the chain of custody, is starting to extend quite a bit. And uh, this is one of the main forcing functions that we see that's expanding that data retention uh, in the enterprise. And so when we look at that, uh, we came up, you know, the difference basically seeing that huge growth in our VTL business and looking forward into the future a couple of years ago as we started on this new uh, product development cycle is we went backwards. So instead of looking at what we can do today and go forward, we started from the paradigm of how do we store something for 100 years and be able to access it in that 100 year time frame? And then we started walking backwards of what would have to happen and, and things that would ne be needed as you backed up through that timeline. And what we came up with is store safe, and we'll talk about that here in a little bit. Um, but that one's the one that we can actually push into uh, uh, into the market as we um, as we expand and work with IBM and we fully integrate with IBM uh, I and the IBM uh, cloud so you can maintain that uh, seamless interface with your existing IBM I infrastructure and still have uh, moved that data from your data center into into uh, the IBM data centers to add a bit of levity hey 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 it's IBM Protect Day and helps on the way. Today, we have a veteran, Abdul Hashmi. He's got over 20 years in service and support, a lot of friends and veterans uh, at IBM, and he's gonna walk you through how we're gonna help support you guys as uh, you know, this uh, end of life has probably been one of the more complex ones um, ever. And IBM is the best at doing them, but I think you know, when you consider everything that has happened with COVID and the, the uh, exogenous effects of that over the last few months, this has become a huge challenge in protecting that IBMI data as this uh, protect here ends of life. So Abdul. Thank you very much, uh, David. Um, hello, everybody. Thank you for joining. Um, very excited uh, for this uh, presentation here. So as David mentioned, uh, Falcon Store has been around for over 20 years, uh, and I have been fortunately part of Falcon Store's support for, for more than 12 years. Uh, so I've spent all my time here at Falcon Store uh, with support, and we have been working with uh, many vendors, but specifically IBM uh, customers, joint customers that we have with IBM. The nature of our business is that we are in enterprise, complex enterprise uh, environments, and so, 
we we get to um, work on a giant customer solution or, or issues with many vendors, in, including um, uh, IBM. Um, so with the protect here being end of life uh, and our experience with working with IBM and IBM storage subsystems and as well as um, the, the protect here uh, um, itself, where we have helped more than 60 customers um, in the last couple of years alone to migrate them. Uh, we have some, some good substantial uh, uh, domain knowledge in this area and we feel comfortable that with that, we, we come up with this offer, uh, which is primarily to extend uh, the protector support services for up to 12 months for those uh, customers using it uh, as they become EOL. So we, we can provide um, uh, support for those and we will go into the, the nature of support for, for Protectier in the later slides. Um, what you get with this, you get 24-7 support. We follow the SUN process. We have support uh, centers uh, here in North America, in, 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 in Germany, uh, EMEA, to cover the EMEA and as well as uh, APAC. So it's 24-7 support that you will have access to our support engineers throughout no matter what time of the day it is. Um, but more importantly, aside from this lifeline that we are pro providing, uh, you'll be able to talk to our professional services. Uh, you'll be able to talk to our SEs uh, to develop uh, and prepare a plan for the actual migration. See, we believe in our solution. We believe what we have uh, in, in, in StoreSafe, uh, that it's not the support that, that, that we really are after, or of course it's a lifeline, but we believe that during that time frame we have all the tools to, to, to provide you a solution that is uh, both uh, serving your needs for today and as well as uh, 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 future uh, proof. Um, with our store safe solution, as we'll discuss later, you'll be able to integrate with uh, IBM on-prem storage or IBM uh, uh, object storage and continue that IBM ecosystem participation. Matter of fact, you know, from our certification metrics, you can check it on our website. There's more than 25 subsystems for IBM that we support today. Um, and in addition to you know, HPE, Dell, EMC, and, and, and Hitachi, and of course, all, all this support is $9.99 per, per month per node, which, you know, for those of us in, in this field, that's just a per incident cost. If you were, if you were out of warranty uh, and you were to call a support, uh, you know, for, report an incident for support, that would be the cost. Uh, but like I said, it's not this 999, but we are sure that our solution will provide you the ultimate uh, peace of mind that you're looking for, both in terms of what you need today and as well as um, uh, in the future. Next slide, please. So what is, what is included um, in this, um, support that we are offering, right? Um, generally, it's, it's basically in five areas. Um, the general system administration assistance. Um, it, this basically includes your configuration and usage. It, it could include your replication and disaster recovery DR mode, operation and managing of the uh, protector installation, the nodes, the CLI, the FSI, uh, replication management, all those that, that are day-to-day operation from for any system administration any issue related to that we will be able to help uh, with that uh, we'll be able to provide help with the with the health check basically document and analyze the protector system configuration um, in in uh, in configuration and status also change the crc calculation algorithm for optimized backup and replication uh, and we'll be able to advise you on how to optimize the operation in troubleshooting um, you know, review protector service report. We can we can uh, analyze the the service report. Uh, we can uh, review the host environment configuration uh, and operation procedure and system logs. Um, review the downstream uh, subsystems and fiber channel environment uh, configuration, and provide a diagnostic and root cause analysis uh, or, in, or workarounds uh, and resolutions to bring the system uh, up as quickly as possible. Um, and then uh, on the performance uh, evaluation, the same thing, we um, review the protective performance reports to find possible cause for backup and restore and performance issues. This, you know, none of these is new to us, obviously. This is what we do with our system. So we're very well 
uh, versed in this uh, and, and also working with our QA and engineering team. Uh, so it's just a second nature for us. Uh, we will be able to monitor and analyze the, and, and troubleshoot the fiber channel or network traffic related uh, bottlenecks uh, and identify those for the, for the customers. Um, and uh, of course, remote assistance, as I said, we follow the sun process. We, 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 we are always on. Um, we don't have holidays at support. Um, so 24 hour technical assistance through a go to meeting will be provided. Then there are areas, if we go to the next slide, of course, that, um, that we may not be able to, uh, we're not able to provide support on those. And those are hardware uh, warranties, software patches. Um, these are the most important one and also the IBM licensing. Now, even though with the hardware warranty, we're not, we say we don't support that, you could always open a case with us, uh, you know, log a support case with, with, with us. We will evaluate the, the provided logs and information to help and identify the root cause or the faulty component uh, and, and advise on the best course of action at that point. Uh, but replacing of the hardware is not supported. Uh, software patches the same way. Obviously, naturally, you will open a ticket with us and we will determine uh, for you after reviewing um, the service report and the logs and information provided that it does indeed require um, uh, uh, a patch. While that may not be possible for us to, to provide that, but we will uh, work with you to provide um, a workaround to bring the system uh, back to a normal state and normal condition. IBM uh, AOS remote control is not supported. We, su we, we support go to meeting. The call home, we don't support the IBM call home, but again, this is something that you can just open a support case with us. Uh, so there's no penalty for how many cases you open, right? Uh, we actually encourage our customers to open a case with us, keep us in the loop. So this way it, 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 it's a joint effort to make sure that there's no surprises. But you can open a case with us and provide us the log um, and we will review it and we will provide our analysis on that. And the last item that really that nothing we can do is is uh, is uh, the licensing uh, for for a particular year. So really hardware replacement, um, the, the 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 fix that may require a code change, but we will work with you with the with the with the, with the possible workaround and the licensing are the ones that that we don't support, right? Um, can we go to the next slide, please? So this plan, this support and migration plan, while it's absolutely critical for anyone running their operation to have some sort of lifeline there, the professional support uh, uh, department that, that can help them and assist them with their daily operations and all those issues we just covered. More importantly, as I mentioned earlier, we believe in our solution. So you will have, as part of this plan, you will have access to our professional services and storage architects around the globe. Uh, to assess and develop a plan uh, um, based on your or your uh, on your needs, um, so assess your current operational needs and, and future growth, uh, review the operational processes and develop a plan according to that. Right, um, we will be able to work with you um, uh, to prepare you for the migration, identify target migration date, and 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 then move on with that. Um, migrate to store safe and verify in data integrity. Um, so it's not just the support you really have access. Okay, now that I got this lifeline, what can I do here? What can Store Safe uh, do for us? We can do POCs with you, and we can tell you what storage systems you can use. In most instances, if you're using Gateway, for example, you don't even need another storage subsystem. We can use leverage the same uh, um, subsystem that you currently use with Protectier, for example. So there's a lot of benefit in this. Um, when you have access to our professional services and we talk about, okay, what is the needs? How much is the data? What is the future needs? And, and how can we come up and design a solution that suits those needs and those requirements? So that's really the takeaway from here is that it's not just the support that we provide. Of course, that's that's always needed. Uh, if I'm an administrator, I would need to rely on somebody. You always can rely on us for that. But really it's giving you, in addition to that, it's giving you this, this pathway to future with a solution um, that is 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 enterprise scale, uh, and we'll go over and cover it. Uh, and that addresses your your needs and, and and business needs, basically. Next slide, please. Okay, so StoreSafe. If you uh, take a look at this diagram here, uh, you know you could have IBMI uh, environment, the BRMS. 
the ingest we accept at 40 terabyte um, per hour ingest. Uh, this is independently ver verified uh, and tested. Um, and, and then you get the flexible, um, customizable virtual tape organization within our store safe. You get the deduplication up to 90, 95% reduction because of the global deduplication uh, um, uh, repository that's available. Um, and you have the ability to write to an IBM on-premise storage. Uh, like I said, we have more than 25 IBM subsystems already certified. Uh, even if it's not on our certification metrics, I actually run my department, runs the, the certification team as well. We can work with you to certify that uh, through that process. Um, so that single instant repository you can have on any uh, um, uh, IBM storage or any other storage. Um, and then you have the ability to now then export uh, containers, um, you know, from this repository to a cloud of your choosing. That may be IBM Cloud, we are, uh, we are certified with them. That may be Wasabi, Azure, or AWS, or any other object storage uh, that we're working on. Uh, this, is, this is very big, right? This, because, uh, you know, as, when you create a repository, right? When you, you, you have certain needs in mind, year one, year two, year three, that's what, what I'll have for year three. But when year three comes or year two comes, you already, past that limit now you have to talk about the expansion and as you all know it's a very uh, cumbersome process it, it requires downtime it requires a resource allocation requires budget allocation with store safe that could all be taken care of simply by emptying out the repository by exporting containers the one that's based on three months or one year old in the repository you can have a policy to export those containers to achieve object storage. That object, object storage may be on-prem or uh, in a remote location. And so you will never have to spend on, on, on the resource allocation or spend on the hardware, on the expansions and stuff like that. So this is really big. This really gives us a flex. We have our VTL installed um, in hundreds of customers and they're really looking forward to store safe. Um, for this, uh, from this point of view, is because that they know they don't need don't need to expand their repository anymore and and work with uh, you know finance and 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 go through that gruesome uh, process. Um, next slide, please. So, in addition, in this slide, what we are talking about here is the legacy tapes. Now, with the start of COVID. COVID, we really have seen an uptick in this area where a lot of organizations are trying to find a way to virtualize their physical tapes that may have been there and thousands of tapes in different uh, physical tape libraries that they want to export. Sure, they have a way, they have to use the original uh, backup software that wrote it to the, to the, or exported it to the physical tape library. But then, importing that and rehydrating that is, is, is a lot of overhead on the backup software. So what does that mean? That means that the backup now is having a reduced uh, backup window and that impacts their backups uh, times and, 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 and stuff. So with Falcon Store, while we can seamlessly serve the clients upstream, say for example, your IBMI, if there is um, there are tapes, any physical tape, but we are literally certified with any physical tape library, and we support both uh, fiber channel, which is four, 40 terabytes per hour ingest that we can accept, but as well as a physical tape library. Uh, I mean, uh, iSCSI, through iSCSI protocol, we can connect to the physical tape library. So we do that import of those old legacy tapes to store safe. In the process, you have the ability to update the, 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 the tape format from LTO3, for example, to LTO7, um, but also get a global deduplication uh, on these tapes. Now you have the ability to present the same tapes to, same, uh, to the backup software for restore or uh, recovery, or you have the ability to now containerize them, send them out to the cloud for a cheaper um, uh, object storage uh, long-term archive. Right, so this is very big and it's very seamless because we do that on the back end. So the front end doesn't, the client is not aware, right? We do that on the back end, the client continues writing to us. Um, so this is this is very uh, huge. Uh, you know, a lot of our customers in EMEA and as well as here in North America are picking up on this and they're uh, taking advantage of this solution. So with the single 
store safe solution, you have the, this ability. And again, the, the, the environment doesn't change, right? You could still have the IBM I on-prem storage. You can still have, you still have that single instant repository and you still have the ability to export out to the cloud, but you now this export out to the cloud is, 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 is condensed, is deduced, compressed and encrypted. That is the key, right? What that means is the less bandwidth, right? The, for you to utilize, if, if we're able to reduce your data by 95%, you're, you, you're sending less data, but more importantly, less storage in the cloud. And equally importantly, when you restore that data, the cloud charges you for egress fee. You don't have to pay for that 100% of the data. You just pay for 5% of it because we compress that for you. So there's a lot of um, advantages to, to using StoreSafe in environment um, to provide all that uh, uh, capabilities. Next slide, please. So here, you know, we always say we, we are, you know, hardware agnostic, absolutely true. You know, we are actually, we don't sell hardware but we are certified with so many hardwares. We're hypervisor agnostic. Our store safe via, uh, VM can run in, in Hyper-V, it can run in Linux, it can run in KVM, uh, it can run on uh, LPAR. So, and also on the front end, as you can see on the left-hand side, any backup software basically can write to us and include with that, of course, the, 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 the import from physical tape library. All that can take advantage of our global deduplication uh, repository, and all of that can take advantage of our hard, hardware agnostic on the back end from storage perspective, whether you write uh, to, to a commodity storage or whether you want to then export out to, to uh, containers. So uh, really, uh, when we say agnostic, we really mean it. Even on the cloud side, if you look, you can actually, that any cloud could be, could be your target uh, for, uh, for your containers, right? Next slide, please. Yeah, um, David, did you want to take that or you want me to take? I, I can take this one, uh, okay. please. So, you know, what is StoreSafe? How, how does it work? Um, you know, how many are using it? I mean, I think you uh, probably saw uh, in the earlier slides that, you know, we've done uh, over 60, you know, IBM Protect Tier transitions in under the last 24 months, uh, I think due largely because of, of the EOL, uh, but a lot of them have opted for the store safe capability um, because of the new approach, as well as the ability to stay within the IBM ecosystem on the server side, as well as on the cloud side. And so you really have the best of both worlds when you're, when you're looking at this, you know, new technology coming to market to kind of bridge the gap. Now, some of you guys have heard about uh, containers, and they've been historically uh, discussed in the context of a runtime environment uh, where you execute applications. And as we started looking at this, um, you know, being storage guys, we kind of turned it upside down and said, well, that's great to run a program in there, but if you virtualized, if the container is virtualized one layer above what a typical VM is at the application level, why can't we store data in that container also? That would give us uh, quite a bit of flexibility and would realistically uh, separate the data from the system. And historically, you know, as a, as a, you know, I guess now 25 plus year storage veteran, most of the time your data on a storage system uh, becomes integrated, right? Um, and uh, very hard to move out of a, say, a, like a Symmetrix or, um, you know, Centera, especially with Centera since it has all the, uh, uh, retention locks and such on it, uh, moving that data without changing the the, uh, the metadata on it and, and cha fundamentally changing the data is, is really, really challenging as we start looking at, you know, 10, 25 years. But if you look at 100, we started thinking in ourselves and how to design this new container approaches. You know, you could go through upwards to 10 to 15 storage systems over the lifetime uh, of that data and have some legal obligations along with it. So, we were looking at this new container kind of technology and um, it gives you quite a bit of flexibility, right? Our, uh, when we were first looking at it, you know, uh, the, our storage guys, uh, our, our senior you know, engineer came in and he goes, well, I don't know, that, that sounds like one of those new technologies. Well, I'll go look at it. And he comes back and goes, wow, 
you know, from a paradigm standpoint, the container is very similar to a tape. He goes, but I don't have any of the constraints of the LTO formats or the other formats. He goes, it's very, very flexible. And so when he, you know, as we looked at it, um, that container contains, you know, a runtime environment where you can execute programs. It has a metadata container contents, right? So the index, hey, what's in here? Uh, and then we've added, and this is, you know, kind of our, uh, what we were going for was a, uh, kind of like a PDF, but a, you know, a, a portable storage format in this data schema uh, with a variable payload um, that these containers could scale depending on how much data you had, as well as the applications you included it in, in the container. And so now we have a fully encapsulated runtime environment with the application that runs the data with the data. Um, and its payload, all of it's encrypted. It's a persistent container instead of a transient or, or stateless container. It's a stateful. This all came together with StoreSafe and all the engines that we have vetted, you know, over the last 20 years at, at StoreSafe to drive data into this container makes it exceptionally portable. And so when you look at this from a long-term standpoint, you can move it from system to system with fundamentally without changing any data inside the container. And that's a really big deal, especially when you're looking at compliance and e-discovery where you can't legally change anything. So this actually gives you a, a huge capability. And if we think out in time, you know, the tandem architecture of having both your application and your data schema, as well as your payload in the container is you know, where we get um, in, in a decade or so that perhaps Oracle is now on, you know, uh, version 27 and the data that you have in the container is version, say, 9. Does 27 even read, you know, version 9 anymore? So putting the container and the application in tandem inside a container and storing that from a uh, archive standpoint makes a lot of sense uh, historically as well as as we've done these uh, experiments have worked out amazingly and doesn't look much different than um, uh, than we showed you before as we you know take the the information in from the tape libraries go into that single instant repository which could be an on-premise IBM uh, object store and then as that fills up we can export that data and we can export it now because of the container technology we have as deduplicated so it's up to 90 percent to 95 percent less then it would be exporting it out. And we can export it directly. We integrate with your IBM um, cloud object storage, and you can move it into IBM for long-term storage of that data and back. So here, very straightforward. Um, you can participate in the, you know, the ecosystem there from your IBM I all the way through to you know, on-premise IBM storage and as well as on into the cloud. When we look at the runtime environment, uh, and we've walked very carefully in, into this uh, and not done a lot of work, we wanted to start very, very small because the first rule of storage is what everybody knows, never ever lose data. And then we know the second rule of storage is never ever lose data, right? So one of the things that we implemented in the container, since now it could potentially be out on the World Wide Web and you know, bad actors could come after it and, and you know, look at it, We've been able to one do erasure coding and make many containers, and we've been able to put in any you know single container as well as these many containers a data integrity check that uh, you know can be set. You can set it monthly, quarterly, yearly, and as this data is setting out there, it will run an integrity check saying yes, I'm still good. Nobody's messed with me. We're still um, you know have the chain of custody, and we have a secure validation log that records those integrity checks to prove that data. This is the first time I think we've ever seen this in any uh, storage capability um, in a product and, or service that I have seen. I think it will become the norm uh, because just going out and putting a book on a shelf and walking off uh, or a tape on a shelf um, and then walking off and coming back a year later, 10 years later, is just not good enough anymore. We need to actually monitor and validate that data. And that's why we're kind of looking at this long-term arch archival is this retention period, which most data is going to fall under, as well as the reinstatement, which goes back further and is more intense than just bringing the data back and, and rehydrating it. It's making sure over time that the data that you have and the data that you stored is the exact same data um, that you brought back and rehydrated. 
And that integrity check over time and validation really points toward a reinstatement of the information that, that you, you have. And so again, um, you know, we fit sim seamlessly into um, the organizations and we've had a, the heterogeneity has really provided a big boom for us uh, from a consolidation standpoint across a number of different uh, footprints, especially now that things are changing and a lot of people want to get away from tape and move that, those tapes into um, a more digital format that they can manage remotely. Uh, but that is store safe in, in a nutshell, uh, and it allows you to keep all of your systems uh, in you know, the IBM environment and go directly to, to IBM Cloud, which is a cloud that you trust. And our, uh, we do have a unified management called StoreSight uh, that manages all our products. So the uh, NSS CDP, which is now StoreGuard, and our VTL and StoreSafe, so that you have that unified console where you can see you know, your data, where your data resides, on what clouds your data resides if you choose a multi-cloud environment. Um, and you can see that in a nice graphical format. Uh, very much to the concept of uh, the old um, uh, Tivoli type product in a networking situation. And so from a summary standpoint, you know, driving store safe uh, into this is more of a data centric approach, very portable. Um, we really focused on long term cost and integrity of data over time, because that's going to be the game as you start going out past that 25, 50 year mark. Storage is going to change, clouds are going to change, up being upgraded uh, and modified, and we need to have that open source um, envelope uh, encapsulation around uh, this technology to help provide the future APIs that will allow you to access this data. You know, we just talked about the automated integrity checks and validation and journaling. We think that's going to be very common as we go forward. We um, didn't show the data egress, but when we break the containers up into six mini containers, you can store two containers, say, on three different clouds. And say if you store with our, our one of our um, one of our partners is Wasabi has no egress fees, so you could pull two data pack two data of, uh, mini containers from Wasabi for free, and then you could look at the other two cloud providers. Uh, that you have perhaps and then pull back the cheapest one and you could leave the the lighter one there the most expensive one uh, and not recover it that would give you the least cost recovery standpoint uh, from a from a data egress fee option and then we have this store site which is that viewpoint into where is my data as this is going to continue to grow and in, and compound as these retention periods extend longer and longer so with that, I know we've covered a lot of information. Uh, I know we probably have quite a number of questions for Abdul on that one. Um, so we'll open it up to questions now. So please feel free in the uh, the questions of the chat to, to uh, type in your questions and whoops, and I will be happy to, to read them to or answer them uh, between me and Abdul. So Abdul, the first question is, and I think you touched on it briefly, uh, $9.99 a month per node, uh, and that's endless call. So it's kind of all you can eat, is that, is that right? It's basically a buffet, yes. Um, uh, and again, it's, 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 you know, it's for us, it's not the $9.99. You know, of course, we want to give them a lifeline, but it's our ability and the stability of our solution and our belief that, that it could solve uh, the problems for these customers or if, the current and as well as uh, going into the future, right? Uh, with store safe. So yes, it's $9.99 per node per month, um, unlimited calls or web access or whatever. Yeah, no, no, no limit on that. So depending on the number of calls, you could get really good friends with them. Uh, I would be friends with them regardless. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be <laughs> because the, the reason I say that it's um it's one is the support aspect uh we really want to be getting in front of these customers and actually explaining to them and and through pocs through discussions about what store safe can do for them in the future and since i run that department uh, department as well uh, more than likely i'll be friends with most of them okay and i think this is a more blocking and tackling uh, uh question is uh they noticed that there was a uh to sign up for the program there is a, a three-month um 
uh, initial initial fee for the first three months and then it's monthly thereafter. That is correct, yes. So um, I think uh, the way we worked out is that three month uh, initial payment um, and, and then it will be month uh, after. But as far as, um, you know, we're concerned that we will start our discussion with them about the ability and, and, and the capabilities our store safe has and it can, can be in their environment um, as soon as they, they're ready. Well, I think that's the catch. I mean, it's, it's one thing being in the life for a individual product, but this entire product line is being in the life and there's not gonna be any follow-up going forward. Is that correct? Yeah, that, that, is, uh, that is correct. That's our understanding that the entire product line is end of life and, and uh, running uh, any operation with a product that uh, you will not have official support is, is really worrisome, right? And so this really extends that life, lifeline for them. Uh, but like I said, really let us talk to you about store safe let us show you what it can do because uh, i mean protect here is not even on par with with what we can do in terms of capabilities uh for the protect here piece itself right so certainly you get all that you have today plus a whole lot more uh with with our solution and our ability uh, and our um, you know being hardware uh, diag uh, um, agnostic and you can run it as a VM, uh, VM in any hypervisor or even an LPAR. Uh, so really adds, um, you know, value added. Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll read this one. I'm gonna paraphrase it a bit. Um, so you're offering three months of service um, up to 12. So this could help somebody that's uh, in a protect your situation like they, this customer is. Uh, help them get through the, you know, kind of this holiday period that's coming up through the first of next year uh, and start planning on moving where they need to go and have that time with everything that's going on. So it gives them the, a little uh, cushion for their, uh, I guess, ongoing survivability, their product, their, you know, make sure that's continued as well as a uh, the time to plan for a elegant uh, transition. Yeah, about, absolutely. Right? Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, you know, this is this is we would love uh, these customers to stay with us on, on store safe. But again, like I mentioned in, in the beginning, we believe in our solution to be the right solution with the right uh, uh, um, price and everything and all the capabilities, of course, uh, for, for these customers. But yeah, at the end of the day, it's customers call. Uh, but this gives them that the ability to, to gracefully uh, migrate to whatever at the end of the day solution they uh, choose. Um, for, for their end uh, environment, right? Right, and then then we have another one. I, I'll do the first half, and then feel free to jump in, uh, Abdul. Uh, it's around the IBMI Protectier uh, patch software updates. Uh, we don't have access to the code. It's not ours. It's IBM's. Uh, so you know, looking at that and providing updates on a code that we one don't have and don't own is, is relatively challenging. So that's one reason that uh, that catches in there. Uh, that we don't do that and, and can't provide that. Uh, that is correct because we we don't have um, access, like you said, to the source code. So any modification, uh, obviously, for for uh, the code needs to be changed requires um, a patch. So we can do that. Um, however, like I said, um, it, it, our customers are always encouraged to open the ticket. So even if we identify that it does require. Uh, just, it's just like our, our uh, store safe, like our customers, for example. Yeah, a certain situation does require a, uh, a patch, but what do you do? Like, how can I get this customer back to normal? There are many workarounds uh, that the engineering and support team uh, and, and the system administrator, administrators are aware of and, and, and get that from time to time. So we will work with you to identify, um, you know, the, the, the right course action, the right course of action and, and, and a solution to bring the environment back up. You may not be 100 percent, but you may be 90 percent where you can still run your backups and everything uh, while we work through this, um, you know, um, the transition to, towards either store safe or whatever the customer at the end of the day uh, decide. OK, we'll wait here for another couple seconds, see if there's any other questions on the the scope or uh, even um, uh, store safe, and we can do a deeper dive into store safe. I know I went over it very, very quickly. We get quite excited about it, and uh, some of the uh, press and analysts that uh, you know has been very, very kind to us on how this has worked, been very well accepted. But 
you know, we know you guys, will, you know, might need a, a deeper dive there than we provided today. So feel free to, uh, you know, sign up for that also. Okay, and then they were saying, and I think you did cover this specifically, but I will take this as the last question. Um, I hesitate to say every, uh, but I think you used the term every. We can take uh, pretty much direct input uh, from a legacy take directly into uh, our system and and uh, uh, deal with it. Is that correct? I mean, uh, all the, 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 the ones in the market, uh, you, you know, for those who which ones we support, you can certainly take a look at our certification metrics, but certainly, yeah, there are a whole bunch of them that we accept both through through both protocols, right? Uh, Fab Channel or iSCSI. If there is one that we don't, we'll be happy to, to discuss that with you that and, and work with you. All right. Well, Abdul, I really appreciate your time today and I appreciate everybody's time on the, uh, the webinar today. I know you guys have been inundated with the uh, webinars uh, over the last six months. But uh, if you want to know more, please uh, visit www.falconstore.com forward slash IBMI. And there will be some uh, information there on the, uh, the, the service that we're providing to help maintain your IBMI protect your environment uh, for the next three to 12 months. Uh, and you can fill out a form there, or you can uh, email sales directly at storesafeinfo at falconstore.com. And uh, we can uh, answer any further questions there, scope out how much storage you need, things like that, uh, and get back to you uh, so that there's no gap uh, in your coverage uh, of your uh, absolutely necessary backup features and functionality uh, from IBM I. So uh, with that, we'll sign up off and thank you very much uh and feel, please feel free to, to drop us a note if you have any other questions that uh, we didn't cover thank you yeah. thank you david and thank you everybody for joining again yeah like david said if anybody has questions we will post a detailed uh support and migration plan with with more granular details than we covered here but other than if anything is not covered or if you have any specific questions yeah, more than welcome to to uh, reach out to us. I'll be happy to get on a call with you and discuss that that, that scenario and that situation with you. But uh, thank you, thank you everybody.